Hey guys, welcome back to Am Sam Fam. Thanks so much for coming along with us again today. If you guys have been watching, you'll know that we've had to change our living situation a little bit. We are still on the boat, still on our 1974 Skookum Trade Winds, and we are still enjoying life here on the boat. Lots of people ask us how it is, how the transition was. It was definitely a transition, but, but we made it and we are still making it and we're still enjoying it. But the big change was that we had to move off of the dock out into the middle of Pongo Pongo Harbor. And so we are out in the middle of the harbor. <laughs> we are currently tied up to the quarantine buoy. Now Port Authority has been great at being willing to work with us on this whole situation. We didn't have a whole lot of time to figure out where we were going when we got the notice that we were going to not be able to be on the dock anymore. And so there aren't any like existing available moorings out in the middle of the harbor and with this being cyclone season here in American Samoa we felt the need to do more than just anchor in the harbor and so we've been working with some local guys to be able to drop a mooring in a safe place in the harbor where we feel confident and comfortable that our boat and even more especially our family will be safe. So the two things, the two big projects we had been working on from that last video was our water catchment system and a dinghy. And I wanted to give you a quick update on how those two projects went and are still going. So let's talk about the dinghy first. So we had a, an inflatable dinghy that came with our boat. It had been left out in the sun too long, too much. All right, we had to make a hard choice today <laughs> and it's going to really hurt, but I think in the long run, we're not going to regret it. So we are retiring our dinghy that came with our boat. This dinghy that we've been putting hours and hours of work into this past week to try to get all the holes fixed. We thought we pretty much had it and we left it overnight and now we came out this morning and it's just it's got just a great big hole in it again where the stuff just cracked and opened back up we could keep it we could keep working on it but we figure every time we have to use it we'll you know we'll tell the kids hey go grab something or one of us just needs to run and go do something real quick oh crap it's leaking okay we've got to do something to fix it and we figure that it's going to be way more of a headache than it will be a help. Ready? And the way we were able to feel comfortable doing that is we were so, so grateful to be able to find a great new to us dinghy. It's an aluminum dinghy and along with a dinghy we got a motor so it worked out just better than we even hoped it would work out and the other big project we were working on in that last video was making coming up with and making and installing a water catchment system and so if you saw we did install a water catchment system and it works so well when it's raining <laughs> Whenever it rains, it fills up our tanks really nicely. We even woke up one night to our bilge pump alarm going off because it had been raining so much that it topped off our tanks and it was going and it was overflowing. And so we had to run up and close it up real quick and everything. But that was the sweetest sound, just knowing that our tanks were totally full and we were good to go. And it was all because our water catchment system had worked. And you would think that with this being the rainy season here in American Samoa that we would be getting plenty of rain. But I think it's been about four, about four days now with no rain and our tanks are getting a little bit low. <laughs> and so that's the downfall. It only fills up our tanks when it's raining. And so if it's not raining, it's not filling up our tanks. Just to be sure we wouldn't run out of water last night we had to jump in the dinghy 
and run over and fill up five gallon water jugs so that we could come and replenish the water in our tanks. But it worked. It was kind of a pain, but wasn't too bad. Uh, Nate's had to do that twice now and he'll just put in his AirPods and listen to an audio book or a podcast or whatever he's got that he's listening to at the moment. And he just kind of zones out and works on it and brings it back and we dump it in and it, it's working. And the last thing I wanted to just catch you up on was the process of moving out here to the quarantine buoy. And so, like I said, we had received permission from Port Authority to be able to tie up to the quarantine buoy from, for one week. January 14th was the big day when we had to be off the dock. And so January 14th rolled around and we knew it was moving day. We had to get our boat off of the dock. That was the day when we made the decision to ditch the old dinghy. We got all of our stuff all the last little bit of stuff off of the dock and filled our water tanks one last time before moving away from that water source and we were ready to go and then the skies opened up and it started pouring on us <laughs> all right well we've been hearing all week that there could be a big storm coming in this weekend it was part of what we were nervous about with moving out to the, you know, out away from the dock, it's definitely raining. <laughs> Hi. You can see all around. Yeah. Again. We were trying to decide, okay, do we go right now <clears throat> or do we trust that the rain is going to clear and that we'll have nicer weather here in a few minutes. We decided to hit pause ran over, grabbed some tutuila greens because you know we love tutuila greens. And we sat down and ate lunch just as we listened to the rain falling on the boat. We finished up lunch and it was still kind of drizzly, but we could see, I mean, there were clouds all over us, so it wasn't going to clear up completely. So we said, all right, let's just go for it. The boys stayed on the Odile, our, our big sailboat, and Hallie and I pushed them off and they started motoring through the harbor while Hadley and I quickly made our way over to the quarantine buoy. Here they come! Holden, you ready to throw it? Yeah. Got it. Nice. Good job, girl. Hey, boys! <laughs> so, out here at the quarantine buoy, there is an old um, derelict boat that's been out here for years and we actually we met the owner of it and he's a really great guy and super friendly and we said all right we'll keep an eye on your boat if you don't mind us tying up our boat to yours and it worked out perfectly and so we were able to tie up to this boat out here ourselves and our neighbors with their sailboat and we've been pretty comfortable out here We've had some storm warnings, we had a few tsunami warnings, and technically we did have two small tsunamis. They rate at, I believe it's anything over 30 inches, and we had two that just barely measured over the 30 inches here in the harbor. But you know what? We didn't actually feel a thing. We were off the boat for one of them, on the boat for the other one, and we didn't feel it at all and we've had really wet days, we've had windy days, and we've had really sunny dry days. It has been a little bit of a transition getting used to taking the dinghy in and out to shore and back out to our boat. One morning I came out 
to take the kids to school and it had been raining all night and our dinghy was, I mean, I'm talking at least half, if not two thirds of the way full of water. And currently we just have a little hand pump to pump the water out. And so I'm sitting there pumping for, I swear it was a good 20, 30 minutes, just trying to pump all this water out of the boat. Oh, and then there was the day that I had taken the kids to school and Holden and I were heading back out to the boat and it was a really windy day. And halfway across the harbor, the motor on the dinghy just stalled. It just stopped. And <laughs> I really haven't had a whole lot of experience with motors in my life. Um, and so I, I understand the basics of motors and how they work and so I was trying everything I could think of and I couldn't get it to work. I tried calling Nate and there was nothing he could do because we had the dinghy, he was here on the boat, but he talked me through a few things. I tried them, they still didn't work. I was like, I guess I just have to grab this paddle and try to get back to the boat. Like I said, it was super windy. I was paddling with all my might and the wind was still pushing us backwards. I made it just about to the cannery, which was the opposite direction of where I was paddling. <laughs> and I was about to give up and just let it blow us to the shore, but luckily our neighbor had been heading into shore right then and saw us out there <laughs> uh, desperate and helpless, and he was so great to come over and fiddled with a couple things and fired the engine right up. and. Yep, learned, learned a good lesson that day and so I don't think that'll happen again, but <laughs> lately life on our boat has been a lot more about work and figuring, solving problems and figuring out what we're going to do and how we're going to make it all work. And so having this dinghy that's in good condition and the motor that works well as long as you are using it right. <laughs> has been a lot of fun for our family. We'll let the kids take turns driving it and figuring, learning how to park it. And we've been cruising around the harbor and just having a lot of fun with it. Today is the day. Peter and his guys are coming to drop our mooring right now. Woo! We are finally gonna be in our semi-permanent location. Gonna be able to get settled there and just have this question mark that's been hanging over us for a few weeks now <laughs> gone and just get back to normal living. I don't even understand how this process works or what it all involves, but let's see. I jumped into the dinghy with Nate so I could get a little closer look and show you guys a little closer look too. We are right about in the spot that we think they are going to be laying it or dropping it i don't know whatever you call it and so it's kind of right between where we were at the uh, quarantine buoy and this other boat down here so we've heard it's a good like muddy spot under there or right under us right here it's got about 10 feet of mud so the mooring will just sink down into it and hold strong there Today is our final moving day <laughs> to get into our at least semi-permanent spot. We don't know how long we'll be at this mooring, uh, but it'll be our home for a while at least. So we did a little prep work yesterday and getting the mooring ready for us to connect to it. And today we are finishing up that prep work and we're going to turn on the engine and motor our boat over and hook up which all sounds really simple, but I have a feeling it's, <laughs> it's all gonna get more complicated. So let's see how it goes.
here's the plan. So we're untied. We're only sitting here still because we're tied to this boat. We'll start up the motor here in a second and just kind of let it get warmed up. We will tie off our initial like lines. We'll tie them off and kind of have them ready to go right here. And um, then we'll go ahead and you'll get down the dinghy. You'll go over there. We'll untie, I'll motor over there and get as close to it. The kids will be at the front kind of getting you the lines. You'll get a line. I'll try to keep us pretty close to being in the right spot. We'll try to give you extra line more than you need. And you'll have time to at least get one tied off really good. And then I can come down and help out do another ones if you want. Okay, <laughs> that was, yeah, we had the rain start coming down right as we <laughs> headed out to, to do this whole thing and then the rain stopped right as we finished up so it was perfect timing. <laughs> we got good and wet, we had some little waves and some wind there but that's all part of the adventure but we were able to get it hooked up we've got two lines coming from our boat down to um a, a shackle and a swivel and then another shackle shackles and swivels and we've said it so many times over the last few days we're here this is the first time that we have been on our boat on our own we've been we were tied to the dock for the first six months six plus months that we were on our boat and then we were um, connected to these other two boats when we were at the quarantine buoy but as of today we are just floating out here by ourselves <laughs> and it feels cool and it's exciting but it always it also feels a little bit scary we're just out here by ourselves and there's a couple things so we are it feels a little bit close to shore over here um, which makes us feel a little bit nervous but um, I think we're secure so then we do have other neighbors around us we just you know they're a little kayak ride or dinghy ride away instead of just stepping 
off our boat to go over and say hi. This whole thing started with a letter telling us that we had nine days to get off the dock. To be honest, that was a few weeks ago. <laughs> but laying the mooring wasn't something that we could just do ourselves. And so we were working with some of the people here locally and just a huge, huge thank you to everybody who has been involved in this process, either by helping us get our dinghy, our motor, helping us get our mooring, helping us lay the mooring, and even just giving us advice and helping us know the best way to go about this. We've got a great community of sailors here in Pungo Pungo Harbor. Everybody is supportive and watching out for each other and even beyond just the people out here living on their boats, the people here in the community around Pongo Pongo Harbor have been awesome as well. So thank you to everybody who has helped us out. But we finally get to close this chapter. We're out here, we're settled. We don't know how long it'll take to for them to do the extension on the dock. And so we are just considering this our home for as long as it takes and maybe even after they finish the dock maybe we'll find that we actually really like it out here on our own so who knows what the rest of our future on this boat will hold we're we are excited to take the boat out again and and have some more adventures that way and you can be sure that we'll keep having adventures on land here on the island and we'll bring you guys along with us but we're going to say tofa soy fua have a good night. Okay, I would say untie this one if you can. Can you get this line untied? And then we'll let we'll see if the boat swings back like this. And... Can I press pause? No, this is a time we definitely want to like, you know, watch. Well, I mean, you can pause and then get a new one going. Yeah, stop and then. Here, I can give you some line here. Ready to untie that kind of quickly.